Special Care if you will make a statement on the impact of the junior doctor strikes and what steps he is taking to prevent further strike action. Secretary of State. Good morning, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, I'm grateful to the Honourable Member for his question. I know colleagues and constituents will be concerned about the planned 96-hour walkout organised by unions representing junior doctors. The Honourable Gentleman asked about its impact, and we know that during the previous walkout by junior doctors earlier this month, 181,000 appointments had to be rescheduled. And with this four-day walkout, the disruption and the risk will be far greater, not only because it lasts longer, but because it coincides with extended public holidays and Ramadan, uh, with knock-on effects on services before and after the strike action itself, and because a significant proportion will already be on planned absence due to the holiday period. NHS England have stated that they will prioritise a number of areas, including emergency treatment, critical care, maternity care, neonatal care and trauma. But they have... John Mike has, has asked the urgent question. He might want to hear the answer to it. Uh, but they have been clear they cannot fully mitigate the risk of patient harm at this time, and that is concerning and disappointing. Patients should not have to face dis such disruption again, and I have invited the BMA and the HCSA to enter formal talks on pay with the condition that they cancel strike action. The BMA's Junior Doctors Committee's refusal to engage in conversations unless we commit to delivering a 35% pay increase is unacceptable at a time of considerable economic pressure and suggests the leadership adopting a militant position rather than working constructively with the government in the interests of patients. Nonetheless, we remain determined to find a settlement that not only prevents further strike action, but equally recognises the important work of junior doctors within the NHS, just, have we, just as we have done with the Agenda for Change trade unions in their dispute. Uh, and we will continue to work in good faith in the interests of everyone who uses the NHS. Shadow Secretary of State. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, more than 300,000 operations and appointments have been cancelled due to industrial action in the NHS since December. The strikes planned for next month will be longer than any previous, with no derogations planned and coming off the back of the bank holiday weekend. Patients are worried sick. Consultants have written to me to say they are terrified for patients' safety. They fear that patients will die as a result. So when is the Health Secretary going to get junior doctors back in for talks, take them seriously and stop these catastrophic strikes from wreaking havoc on patient care? First, they failed to learn the lessons of the nurses' strikes and refused to speak to junior doctors until the last minute. Then, instead of treating junior doctors with respect and sitting down for proper negotiations, ministers took to Twitter for a mudslinging match. The BMA accused the Secretary of State of misrepresenting the truth when he tweeted that its pay demand was a precondition. They have since said it is a starting point for negotiations. So can he today clarify which side is correct and who was spreading fake news? Since the beginning of these disputes, the government has acted like a bystander when patients needed action. Never was that clearer than when the Prime Minister said he didn't want to get in the middle of them. We have a Prime Minister whose idea of leadership looks more like cowardice. He talks about delivery, but the NHS is still waiting. Madam Deputy Speaker, these strikes come at a time when the government is failing to cut the NHS backlog. But it's not only the backlog they've built up. A plethora of plans were trailed in the press in we recent weeks, but on the final sitting day before recess, none have emerged. No sign of the NHS workforce plan, when the NHS is short of more than 150,000 staff. No sign of the general practice plan, when patients are finding it impossible to see their GP. No sign either of the review of ICSs or the social care update, which reports suggest contains a stealth cut of £250 million to the social care workforce. So can the Secretary of State say whether the government is planning to get the bad news out over recess and avoid scrutiny in this House, or is it less sinister and they just don't know what they're doing. Uh, well, the urgent question was on the, the junior doctors. He, he said, went through a. Uh, uh, I'm, sure I, I, he, he says, uh, uh, I'm sure I will. Uh, quote. There's a, uh, a, a rare point of agreement between us. But let me uh, t go through uh, the list of things that he did raise uh, pertaining to the junior doctors uh, dispute. He said that the government should get the junior doctors uh, committee in for talks. Uh, we have uh, done so. In, in fact, his third question made reference uh, to the fact that we have. Uh, so we have had the junior doctors in for discussions. He. Well, run through the uh, questions. Uh, he says that um, um, we should um, uh, not. Uh, he questions whether there were preconditions uh, attached to those discussions. And I have checked the minutes uh, of the meeting. Uh, and there was a list of conditions in terms of uh, a pay restoration of 35%, uh, a range of other factors uh, that they put on the table uh, that were preconditions that the government had to commit to. Now, the point is, he himself has said in the media he doesn't support those preconditions. He says that 35% is, 
is unaffordable. So what is his position? One minute he says he supports the junior doctors and that they should not go on strike, and yet the next minute he says that he doesn't actually support the precondition that the junior doctors have said is the requirement for them to enter into discussion. Now, the reality is that the government has taken a constructive and meaningful approach to trade union negotiations. That is why we have reached agreement with the Agenda for Change trade unions. It is why uh, the Royal College of Nurses, uh, the Unison, uh, the GMB, the Royal College of Midwives are all recommending the agreement that has been reached, covering more than a million staff across the NHS and recommending to their members uh, there. The junior doctors have set a precondition on those talks which he himself does not agree. That is a precondition. He doesn't seem to understand the terms of junior doctors. Man, I don't use He asked the question. He's getting the answer. And the fact that it points to the contradiction in his own position is one that he seems to be having trouble with. We're used to on this. We're used to on this side of the house having contradictions in the opposition front bench. He supports the use of the independent sector. His deputy does not. He wants to nationalise uh, the GP estate. Uh, his, his shadow chancellor does not. The opposition benches are full of contradictions. The reality is there is a position in terms of the chief chancellor again. There is a position in terms of precondition. He asked me to confirm at the dispatch box whether it was a precondition of the junior doctors and I, the head of the UQ, have checked, I have checked the minutes. Constant Chuntry, Secretary of State. They, they don't seem to, they don't seem to like my letters, their question being answered. So the, the, the reality is, he asked whether I would confirm for the avoidance of the bout at the dispatch box. That is exactly what I'm doing. And I have checked the minutes. I have spoken this morning with officials to confirm before I made uh, this statement to the House and it was a precondition of the talks that we were told uh, in terms of the pay erosion at 26.1% and that that needed to be restored at 35% uh, alongside uh, other things. The reality is he doesn't support that, but he's facing both ways, wanting to support the junior doctors, but not actually willing to support the pay ask that they're demanding.